Adventures of Black South Carolina, True Stories of Black South Carolina, and the novel Mr. Parks and Me. And I'm a professor of history at Springfield College in Charleston, South Carolina. Now, let me ask you folks this. Many of you, I'm sure, have dealt with instances where you've had to face a whole lot of obstacles. And, of course, it gets sort of discouraging sometimes, especially these days. However, we always have to think that there are a lot of people who live with far more handicaps in the way that we do today who still manage to become successful, and this should be used as encouragement for people in our time. One of them was a man who I wrote about in my book, uh, Voices of Black South Carolina, an individual by the name of Dr. Benjamin Elijah Mays, and he is shown right uh, here in this picture. Now, here's his story. Dr. Mays was born in a place called Epworth, South Carolina in 1894. Now, it's important to understand a little bit something about uh, South Carolina during this time. In 1895, a man by the name of uh, Benjamin Tillman, he was the architect of the Jim Crow laws of South Carolina, he had a constitutional convention in which uh, segregation was made the laws of the state, which will be a subject of uh, a later one of these videos. And that, of course, deprived African Americans of their voting rights within the state of South Carolina. Well, it, and there a place called Greenwood, which is in the uh, upper section of South Carolina, there's a town called Phoenix. And in Phoenix, South Carolina, in November of 1898, there was a white gentleman by the name of Thomas Tolbert, who was very sympathetic toward African Americans, so he arranged for them to cast their ballots at a store of his, at a store of a cousin of his during an election that year. Well, of course, that was not well thought of during that time. And a mob eventually came to the store, and it was led by a man by the name of Giles Etheridge and another fellow by the name of Robert Cheatham. So as he was registering the blacks to vote, these men got into fight with uh, some of the blacks as well as Thomas Tolbert, and Thomas Tolbert was shot in the shoulder, and Giles Etheridge was killed. Well, this, well, Thomas Tol Tolbert went back to his home to recuperate, but a mob followed him there, and they managed to, while they were there, shoot his father John and his 12-year-old cousin Stevie. Miraculously, they all survived. But then they turned their feet, the mob turned its fury on the local African-American community. Uh, among the men who were lynched as a result of this were Jeff Darling, Ben Collins, Essex Harrison, Columbus Jackson, Jesse Williams, and Drayton Watts. And an eyewitness account of that time by a man by the name of Gordon Blaine Hancock goes as follows. It caused great tr travail and trembling among the Negroes. One black man was shot to death on the main road, and no Negro in 96 South Carolina, which is the name of a nearby town, was, went to town for weeks. Negroes were taken in the woods and chained to logs. The white men beat them and many died. Well, among the things that happened during this incident that was known as the Phoenix Ride of 1898 was that a man by the name of Hezekiah Mays was walking down a road in nearby Epworth with his son. And so the mob made, caught them, and they made uh, Hezekiah take off his hat to them and bow down to them in the streets. And his four-year-old son watched this. The four-year-old son name, of course, was Benjamin. And Benjamin said later in reflecting on this that that was the earliest thing that he could remember. And he was determined as, as he grew up that he would do what he can to prevent incidents like that from happening to the in the future. And he could, did a good job of that, too, as a matter of fact. He went on to read everything he could, and he read about people like the great Booker T. Washington and Frederick Douglass, and he read the newspaper, and he eventually made his way to South Carolina State College, which is now a university in Orangeburg, South Carolina. From that, he went to Bates College up in Maine, and from there he graduated, and he eventually became the president of Morehouse College in Atlanta, Georgia, as well as an advisor on racial affairs. He was very, he felt very keenly about the discrimination that he faced as a young man. And he went on to uh, help Atlanta blacks register to vote, among other things, and pursue their civil rights. But one thing that was really fascinating was that in, in the 1930s, he went to India. And at that time, the great Mohandas Gandhi was engaging in nonviolent protests to free, Britia, free India from the hands of the British, which was successful in his case. And he came back to America and continued to teach and become the president of Morehouse College. Well, 
1948, he taught the lesson of Gandhi to a class, and in that class was a young man who was looking for answers to the solutions of the problems of his people. The name of the young man was Martin Luther King. And Dr. Mays became the great mentor to Dr. King, as well as the man who gave the eulogy at his funeral. He also died a respected well elder statesman. He was also the president of the Atlanta School Board for a while, and he was known for going out uh, when he saw young kids who were not in school, he would just basically go up to ask, and ask them in his old age, hey, why aren't you in school? He was a really great man. Now, the story of Benjamin Mays should provide inspiration for a lot of people that shows what determination could do to rise a man from that type of humble beginning to be what he became in a time when we have far less opportunities than uh, most people do today. But another thing to consider is this. Had Dr. Benjamin Mays not witnessed the horror of that race riot, he would have never passed that wisdom on to Martin Luther King. And that, that part of, and that great story in American history would have never happened. It goes to show that in the words of William Shakespeare, it is always darkest before the dawn. Thank you.